configuring console connection software in Windows. By the time we're done here, you will be able to configure a console port connection from a Windows computer. All right, well, before we get configuring these switches with what I call a base configuration, I want to first show you how to set up a console connection, meaning more of the software side of things, on a Windows-based device. And I'm thinking after this, I'm going to create a nugget on how to do it on an Apple device, because I know there's a lot of OS X lovers out there. Uh, so first off, we've got the hardware in place, and I'm going to be uh, demoing this on a Cisco SG300 10-port switch. I've got my USB to serial adapter, this one from Cable Matters. Uh, and then I've got my console cable, which is a DB9 female to DB9 uh, female, which will connect one side to this male uh, USB to serial adapter, and the other side will plug into the back of that SG300 10-port switch. Now, we talked about the hardware in the last nugget, so what software do you need? Well, first off, if you haven't plugged it in before, you're going to need the driver for this USB to serial adapter. Uh, so let's let's uh, find it. I'm going to plug it into Windows. Now, this is Windows 10. Uh, first time connecting this. And a lot of times, Windows will have built-in drivers for it. If not, you got to go to the manufacturer website or bust out the CD-ROM, if you even have such a thing, and get the driver from there. Uh, so you can see it's installing the device right now. And look at that. It says, I'm installing, it's recognized, a prolific USB to serial COM port. Did you see that? COM13. Now, that COM13 is going to be essential because when we use the software program, which is actually going to be PuTTY, and I'll show you how to find that in just a moment, uh, you're going to need to know that COM number. Now, if you missed it, you went to grab a cup of coffee while it was doing that, uh, you can always open Device Manager. And I'll go down from the network adapters. Right there is our ports. Uh, common LPT, and right there is COM13, prolific USB to serial, uh, so I can always find it right there. Okay, so uh, USB to serial is good. Now I'm going to take this guy, let's go in and uh, unvelcro him, get him connected from my laptop to the back of that SG300. Good, and good. We are connected. Now, as you can see, nothing magical happened. Nothing popped up on the screen. I have to download what's known as a terminal program. So I'm going to just open Microsoft Edge there, and I'm going to search for PuTTY. Now, PuTTY's not the only one out there. There are others like TerraTerm, like HyperTerm, if you're going really old school. Um, but uh, PuTTY is great because it's an open source project. It's always being kept up to date. Uh, so there's always, it's, you know it's always stable, and it's just so simple. Uh, you can see that you can, you can even download the installer, but I just go straight for the executable. You, I mean, you, don't, you can just copy that file to your desktop and use it straight from there. So that's, that's how simple it is. So I'm going to hit uh, save on that guy, let it download, and we're good. So I'm going to click on run. Opens the program right there, and you can see it's saying, okay, what kind of connection do you want? A raw, telnet, R login, SSH, and we are going to go for serial. Now, this is where you need to know that COM number. So I've got COM1. I'm going to type in COM13 because that's uh, what Device Manager showed me. And then I've got the speed over here. Now, this speed is actually really critical because mini switches just simply won't work if you have the wrong speed. Now, 9600 baud or bits per second is the most common speed that's, that's going to be typed in. And that's the most common thing that network devices use, especially uh, Cisco Enterprise stuff. But best thing to do is to always go to Google and type in, for instance, SG300-10 uh, serial settings or COM port settings or something like that. So right there, console settings. Uh, actually, hey, I'll go with the quick start guide because that's usually a little more reputable than some forum. There we go. I'll hit control F on the keyboard and search for, let's do serial. Uh, serial cable, okay, okay, right there, perfect. So using the console port, so connect it to the serial cable, use hyper terminal, so they are, whoa. Uh, they are old school there. I think I just zoomed way in. Uh, configure the utility with the following parameters, 15,200 bits per second. Uh, so that is great. And oh, look at this. It says with the release 1.245, auto baud detection is enabled by default, which is actually really nice. So this switch, you can use any speed and it'll auto detect what you have. Uh, a lot of switches don't do that. I'm going to go with what they said, 15,200 and hit open. Now, when the screen comes up, it's black. And don't fear, you want to hit the Enter key a couple times on the keyboard. And usually something happens, but it's not happening. Well, that's not cool. Let's try a little trouble. First off, is this, is this switch even on? 
Yeah, switch is on. I see a blinking light there. Now, when the system light is blinking rapid like that, at least on this model of switch, it uh, means there is no configuration. Um, I'm going to try a different baud rate just to see if that works. Oh, I lost my putty. Putty.exe, double click that guy, and let's try it again. We'll go serial connection, COM13, and let's just try 9600 baud. Oh, look at that. Ha <laughs> ha. Documentation was a liar. Uh, so yeah, it, it looks like it, it. this one had to be 9600. So I'll hit enter key, retry authentication. Okay, so the good news is that we're in and even the Cisco quick start guide was totally off. Well, let me summarize that process because I know some of you are going, what just happened there? Uh, so first off, we got the USB to serial adapter and the console cable and connected it to our laptop and switch. So we physically connected the whole chain of events, right? Everybody's good with that. Now, when we did that, Windows automatically installed the driver for that USB to serial adapter and called it COM13. So I'm already down to step three, right? Um, and that all happened automatically. Now, if your Windows operating system doesn't have the driver for your USB to serial adapter, you'll need to download that and install that. But the end result is the same. You end up with a new COM port on your Windows operating system. Then you go download a terminal program. Now, I really pushed you towards PuTTY, but there are others out there like TerraTerm. I actually used TerraTerm <laughs> before I knew PuTTY existed. Um, and then there's HyperTerm. If those of you like the uh, old Windows throwback, the guy who wrote HyperTerm uh, actually doesn't belong to Microsoft. Microsoft just licensed it from him. He created HyperTerminal Private Edition, which still isn't as good as PuTTY. So <laughs> use PuTTY. Um, and then from there, we open a serial connection. We type in, use that new COM port that we created. Mine was COM13. Yours will probably be something else. And then select what speed. And I think that's probably where most of the confusion uh, came in. First off, we saw the Cisco documentation that said, oh, well, our Cisco SG300 used this and that didn't work. So I just pulled 9600 out of the top of my head. Now, I know that because I've done this for a long time. There are four common speeds, actually three common speeds. This one, this one and this one. Actually, this one's here just because I didn't like having an uneven column where I had two on one and one on the other. <laughs> I'm kind of joking, but kind of serious. But if you go to, to uh, Google and type in serial port speeds, you'll actually see there's a lot of other speeds out there. And this takes me back to my old uh, Commodore Amiga running a BBS uh, at 1200 baud. These are all the different speeds uh, that are out there. So you can try those and just cycle between them to see if you find one that works. But almost always, it's going to be one of those four. So try those first. Now, I promised at the beginning of this nugget that you will be able to configure a console port connection from a Windows computer. So now I want you to do it. The practical exercise is simply to access the console port interface of one of the switches that you've purchased. Now I'm saying one, but I really want you to do them all. Get that command line interface up there to where you have administrative access and get this switch to the point where you can manage it from the console port. As a bonus, I've said, ensure that you document the settings that you need for the switch. Once I figure out the console port settings, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a white sticker and put it on the back of the switch. I'll write console speed and then the baud rate that I used. And I'll jot down the default administrative username and password. In this case, it was Cisco Cisco. I don't do that for all switches, but if it's a brand name that I'm not super familiar with, I'll put that sticker on there to save me time in the future. And this is why I love teaching the IT expert series here at CBT Nuggets, because in the real world, console ports don't always work when you plug them in. Sometimes you just have to try different settings, different speeds until you find something that does work. Well, next up, console connections from Apple devices. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.